Palantir stock explodes way higher in after hours today, trading on amazing Q3 2024 earnings results. So we've got growth coming massively for the United States while keeping strong margins too. So even at this current price, the market still wants more Palantir. So let's just dive right into the numbers and then I'll give my thoughts on the earnings call as well and what I think is coming up next for Palantir now after this game-changing quarter. Now, big story is U.S. revenue growth exploding and not only because of commercial, but to my own surprise as well, U.S. government vastly outperformed this quarter. But still, even though all the attention is on top-line growth, Palantir continues to be a margin machine continuing to improve this metric with an ever-growing cash pile that's standing at a massive $4.6 billion. And with guidance still showing management's optimism too, but really quick before the rest of the numbers here, Pounder's earnings, did it surprise you as well? And if so, what stood out the most to you? So we open up the presentation after the highlights, showcasing the power of their AIP boot camps and the velocity of how quickly these seven-figure deals with clients take to get signed on. First, with a bottled water manufacturer, just in only 50 days, they came in from a boot camp to a signed deal. Then a health provider within three months from client inbound to seven figures. And then with an agricultural software provider getting to a seven figure deal at less than two months. And you know what's even better? These are all ACV deals or annual contract value. So Palantir is getting paid at least $1 million per year on these deals and closing them out super fast. If any of you have worked in a corporate environment, finding a vendor and proving if it's worth it based on an estimated ROI can take a crap ton of time. But in Palantir's case, it looks like they're locking these down with the power of boot camps and use case scoping, proving they can deliver value for what these clients are actually paying for. Now we get on to the series of highlights from the quarter, but most notably the S&P, but also the continued support for Ukraine with Palantir's technology and how Palantir is transforming the battlefield with AI, as well as the massive Maven extension too. So they also showed off their latest drone solution and most recent AIPCon highlights, where they shared actual metrics coming from the horse's mouth themselves. So massive percentage improvements, tens of millions of dollars saved, and many more. These are always great to see. I know we cover them as they come out, but getting them all all together in the presentation is a nice touch. But here's where we get to their numbers. So first, gap net income. This actually came in pretty flat on a sequential basis if you look here. So it's still up 100% year over year, as you can see on the graph. But during the live stream, I was giving my thoughts on how this is not the focus for Palantir's management right now, or at least not as heavily, besides doing what's enough to demonstrate a strong business. It's not a all hands on deck kind of situation since they are positive and have kept their S&P inclusion eligibility. So where they are today, I'm very happy with. And on a related note too, Gap operating income still is also healthy. They make money as a business and don't need to rely on financial engineering. We know the interest income is very good and a nice added touch with rates where they are today. So keeping this positive though and expanding this down the line will play a larger role when we get there. Now the first heavy hitter that management was bragging about the whole call. The rule of 40. This is at an all-time high for Palantir and they love showing this off right now because it's a metric that allows them to compare themselves to other software peers. 40 is like a good target here that you want to meet, but Palantir is smashing this out of the park at 68%, where three of the percentage points in gain last quarter is due to their revenue and then the other percentage point due to their adjusted operating margin. Palantir even amongst the giants is leading where it really can't be denied that they're leading the pack. Now the second heavy hitter, US revenue growth of 44%, and they are very much emphasizing here that their business is strong throughout the whole United States, both for government and commercial revenue. They are hitting their stride all at once where it seems that the business is booming to the point that the narrative is kind of shifting because before the main focus was so heavily on US commercial, US commercial, and we've had some abysmal growth seen in the past with US government due to its lumpiness that they've talked about before. But management seems very optimistic now on this trend to continue. This was honestly the most unexpected aspect of growth in my personal opinion. US government did surprise last quarter too when it was already above 20%. But getting to 40% this time was just a whole different beast, and the market obviously likes this too. Now, when going to the combined breakdowns of commercial versus government with international included, we are still seeing healthy growth, of course, but this does mean internationally, if broken up, is not doing so hot right now. Commercial, for example, US is 54%, but when added together, it drops all the way down to 27%. 
And then for the government, it goes from 40% down to 33% when they're combined. The drag of international is at least being overshadowed by the US. So with all these combined, we land at the beautiful 30% year over year growth for Q3 2024. This signifies that Palantir has gotten back to the earlier narrative in their life as a public traded company during their GPO, where 30% was the plan. And with management expecting this trend to continue accelerating now, even exceeding this may be in the cards for Palantir, hopefully consistently in the future. Now, the other big factor is how well is Palantir obtaining customers and actually keeping the money after expenses? Well, their adjusted operating income has continued to go up now to 38%. Yes, the dollar amount here is not as high, but as a percentage, even as their top line is growing, just shows that Palantir is not only driving growth to their business, but doing so in a responsible way. This is pretty significant than a lot of other software companies where they bite the bullet of lower margins to acquire customers and top line growth. Whereas Palantir essentially as a holy grail model where they figured out how they can get the best of both worlds. Now here's one less than bright spot though I want to point out, which is important actually to me too, customer count. Now I'm not saying there's any big warning here and they're doing horrible, but it's a point of improvement I'd like to see and start the trend in a more positive direction for future quarters. So US commercial count is still growing nicely 77% year over year, but as you notice, the sequential growth rate is still trending downwards. So mathematically, it's definitely harder to pull off with an ever increasing baseline every quarter. But based on the excitement from management, it just feels like this would be a huge number of growth sequentially. So it's just something to keep monitoring. But you can see in the overall customer count too, the sequential drops down to 6% with a total of 629 customers at this point. But do remember, this is a leading metric and we technically have to be getting revenue from folks to be including them. So the sales pipeline may or may not be a factor in how this actually count goes down because customers trying out the software may take more time than others to get a deal signed. And if they're not paying, they would not be included here officially. So over the coming quarters, I'll be vigilant to see if there's any break in trend here where there's possibly a reversal to accelerating sequential growth rates. Then we deal with this slide here, a big 104 worth at least $1 million deals. And then we have 36 at 5 million and then 16 at 10 million. This is a great pulse on how they're getting through deals in the quarter. Now these deals can vary in ACV or annual contract value since these are the total amounts, but still to commit seven figures for any business is a vote of confidence that they probably can get a decent ROI with Palantir and maybe ran the numbers or at least got to the trial bases. And those 16, $10 million deals are ones that I suspect are mostly renewals for established behemoth customers. So here's the treasure trove though. Now Palantir has accumulated $4.6 billion now in cash and cash equivalents and U.S. Treasury securities. This continues to pile up. And I know some folks aren't the happiest when they see a lot of cash, but I'm in the boat of, yes, I do think it's important to throw cash at growth driving activities, but also I'm not in a rush while rates are still where they are. It's better to be conservative in my opinion and get a meaningful ROI that you can guarantee or at least highly likely do when you're spending our cash because you don't want to find yourself at a point with an amazing opportunity to deploy, but your cash pile was placed somewhere else less than ideal at the moment or it's reduced down. Palantir's cash pile provides a level of safety where if they are pulling off growth right now, there just may not be a need through the nature of their product. We all saw when they tried to build a sales team, it didn't really go anywhere. We didn't see meaningful results, but then they pivoted to the AIP boot camps and the less traditional route of selling. And now we're starting to reap the rewards of this as we see in the numbers. Essentially that this is the sales staff, I think, who are these folks running and the boot camps and creating a pipeline of customers ready to build, evaluate, and then eventually sign on as we've seen with the first slide of the seven figure ACV deals. But wait, there's also more guidance. Palantir continues to sandbag themselves, I believe, as we've seen the latest results. Q3 was expected around 25, 26% and they came in at 30% this time. Next earnings, they are expecting around $767 million to $771 million for Q4. If they hit the top line of that estimate they just gave, it's 27%. And with pure speculation, if for some reason they hit 32%, that would put them at a $800 million revenue quarter, which would be unthinkable just a few quarters ago for some of those, of course, who didn't believe in Palantir's growth. And for the icing on top two, they increased their full year guidance by another $50 million with that ginormous in excess $1 billion of adjusted free cash flow. It's already one month into Q4 technically, so this must be based off some of the early insights for the quarter. And we know their history with guidance sandbagging, so I'm not worried at all that they'll meet or exceed that they set out for themselves.
Now, with all these spectacular metrics, I know a lot of you are wondering about their buybacks too. Palantir did buy back 1.8 million shares for around $46 million. So it's symbolic in my opinion, as I've noted, but still interesting to see them continuing to purchase shares at these prices. I think what will be more interesting to see is if we see any change in this. I think they're kind of just passing this off as, oh, we're just continuing to buy shares for the program and just giving a good sign here that we believe in our stock. However, I'm not going to say it's going to be meaningful at this moment, in my opinion. Now on to the earnings call. Management overall is very optimistic. This is pretty apparent when you hear the way they're talking and the points that they're talking about. And if I hammered the point enough, they are super excited about their US business and revenue growth rate in general. They were also surprised by that 44% growth in the US because the base of a $2 billion there is already massive. And you truly have something special to sell being able to pull off these numbers. A lot of these similar points were covered in the presentation, so moving to the questions first, they had the voted retail questions where they were asked how they differentiate themselves in the AI market. And essentially the proof is in the pudding of the results that they showed off. They talk about positioning in the AI market where models are continuing to commoditize and converge in value, while Palantir is doubling down on playing the operationalizing aspect of AI. And this no doubt is rooted in the ontology, and they make sure to tout that over two decades of work to get to the point where they are today. Basically refining their product through their government business to the point that commercial enterprises today are finding massive value implementing it too. Then they were also asked about how the balance of their expansion globally is going, and basically they point out to the numbers. They are continuing to prove to themselves and to their customers with their products that they can go deeper and provide transformational value to the point that these customers are willing to pay a ton of money for it. And they point out this optimism and reflection in the raising of their guidance, and they see their business continuing to accelerate. Then we've also got the two analysts for questioning, first Dan Ives, who asked about boot camps, and then Mariano Perez from Bank of America, who pointed out the growth for U.S. government, as well as the juice behind that. I'm not going to say it was eye-opening or anything new, and honestly, they were softball questions, but management continues to point to their results, showing that what they are doing is working, and that the product speaks for itself. And for U.S. government specifically, from Mariana's question, they are continuing to partner with the U.S. primes and serve defense tech startups, so they believe this is a working strategy driving growth for them now. So huge, exciting results that you can tell from management's demeanor the whole call. I wouldn't be surprised if they're celebrating right now and the market seems to be doing a similar thing. Right when the results came out, the stock basically popped into the $46, $47 range. Even during the earnings call, we didn't really see much change here. So at least going into tomorrow in the short term, it seems that the market is ready to celebrate these earnings and actually award Palantir their rich valuation because they're actually proving the growth and narrative today. And what do I expect for the company going forward? Well, I think they're going to keep on driving growth. Their main focus still is top line and maybe gap net income is not going to be priority, but it's definitely not going to go into any negative range or be in any danger of that to keep their S&P inclusion. As well as the buyback suit that I mentioned, this is more of a symbolic thing, but I think management is still wholeheartedly aligned and behind retail, as well as their whole shareholder base, even if they're an institution. It shows that they are committed to growing, even if it's in their US side or internationally, as well as commercial versus government. So it looks like they're hitting it on all cylinders here, and hopefully Q4, they close out even more higher than the guidance that they're giving today, and possibly continue that sandbagging that we see. So amazing earnings today. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are below, and I'll see you in the next video.